Welcome to the British Museum. Founded in 1753 by an Act of Parliament, it's actually based off the original collection of Sir Hans Sloane, a scientist and physician who specialised in the diseases of the rich, which apparently is a real thing. Now, what Sir Hans Sloane also did was he invented milk chocolate. And if the British Museum had a penny for every milk chocolate bar sold, it would do rather well. It was actually purchased under a number of conditions. One, for the sum of £20,000, and two, that anyone should be able to access the collection freely. Now, actually, the British Museum may not have been the British Museum at one point because it was first offered to the British government. But if the government had rejected it, it would have then been offered to St. Petersburg and then Paris and then several other European nations as well but the UK government did accept it, and so on this place, Montague in Bloomsbury, it was founded in 1753. Now, its collection ranges about nine million objects, of which any one time, there's probably about 1% on display. So we're gonna have a look inside. Now, as you know, I used to work here several years ago. It's changed a bit since then, but let's go and see what's going on. A Couple of other things worth noting. First of all, apologies for the quality of the video. Low resolution for a global spherical video, but the machines will get better over time. So it is what it is. Secondly, in the British Museum, you're not allowed to use tripods of any size, big or small, even tiny ones. No tripods allowed. But you can still use selfie sticks. Strange enough, many places have banned them, but November 2015, you can still use selfie sticks in the British Museum. Welcome to the Great Court of the British Museum, opened around the turn of millennium. It is the largest glass-covered area in Europe and consists of over 1,656 panes of glass held together with Austrian steel. So you can see behind me, if you rotate round, beyond the first century statue of a man riding a horse, there is the rotunda, the original reading room of the British Library which right now is currently an unused space as they try and decide what they're going to do with it. But uh, it's early in the morning, so it's quite quiet here. Give it an hour or so, and this place will be absolutely packed with people. So how about we just go on a little walking tour around the actual Great Court so you can see more of it. Many bookshops, lots of little shops in the British Museum. Some rather impressive totem poles right behind me, if you switch around. Of course, you've got to have somewhere for your tea and stickies. Now, the reason the British Museum Great Court is so quiet is that the actual galleries don't open till 10 a.m. But you can get into the Great Court itself at 9 a.m. So for an hour beforehand, you can actually walk around, look at the shops, and it's generally fairly quiet. Again, surrounding the rotunda, the old British Library reading room, you've got lots of little shops selling, well, usually an awful lot of books. Now over that way is the new Sainsbury's Exhibitions Gallery. That opened a couple of years ago and uh, it's quite an impressive space. I think the first exhibition that was actually there was the new Vikings exhibition. And directly above, just over there, is the actual British Museum Friends Members Room, where if you're a member of the British Museum Friends, you can gain access and there's a can of cafe in there and a small library and a place to go, it's a bit quieter than the hustle and bustle of the rest of the museum. Right, let's carry on. Another place for food and drink. Don't look at the coffee prices. 
So if you are a British Museum Friends member, you get 10% discount on that anyway. Still not cheap. But then you're supporting the museum. The roof is quite spectacular. And that's pretty much a rotation around the Great Court. Let's go and have a look at some of the galleries next. Thank you. 